Here it is. Uh, ah! Size! Siloed! And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, a show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I guess we got to start saying news reviews and interviews and whatever else, because that's right, kids. We got an interview for you this afternoon. Stick around. We're going to be talking with the guy responsible for getting Toe Jim and Earl all up on your penguins, all up on the Steams. And all, yeah. all, all the other platforms, too, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's great. I'm sure you've already just skipped ahead looking for it. It's going to be in the timestamps. That's cool, man. That's cool. Um, I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Actual. I'm always switching the bits, doing the Nightmare Fuel in our little Linux-powered studio. And the man up north, that is one Jordan the Swan. Huh? Who's uh, yeah, about to be doing all kind of fun stuff, man. He's going to be moving soon. That's terrifying. Yeah. And one Pedro yes. Mateus who has shifted slightly Hello. ever so to his left. Um, scooch, scooch. Shifty. Um, Shifty Mateus, we call him. Staying up extra late. <laughs> past his bedtime. We're depriving him of his Roblox game. Um, <laughs> Robocraft, but close enough. Something. No, no, ro- 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 Roblox. Robo- Roblox. Yeah. <laughs> but we do have you joining us live on Twitch. Uh, Chat Realm Dynamic helping us form. Cocaine Voltron. But before we get started, we like seeing what's going on in each other's live organs, baby. I know we just finished that interview because we tried to do that early. Because, hey, man, if you're going to be kind enough to come what? hang out with us on a Saturday night, we're, we're going to make it like super late on Saturday night, right? Well, are, are you are you saying that we don't just record this this podcast in one straight shot? You've we're, ruined my illusion, then. We've done that before. Shush. Stop messing with the time machine already. <laughs> uh-huh. You never know. We just go back to the <laughs> All kind of fun things going on. I'm putting the bows on that hipster PCI sound card. Uh, That interfacing Linux is going to be up for patrons uh, probably Monday or Tuesday. But Monday, the uh, little bit that I did for the HDMI capture card that I managed to pick up that turned out wasn't USB 3D, even though it was blue. There'll be a little story (laughs) demonstrations and all kind of. I will give you a little spoiler. They pulled it from Amazon. So, mm. yeah, they, maybe I call somebody up. I'm like, what's up, girlfriend? And uh, yeah, so more on that at 11. Also, I am uh, actively talking myself into, because we are going to be doing in 2021, bringing a lot of people, um, smaller game developers, larger ones, uh, people who have taken the time to get their games over to Linux and projects to Linux, because we've been spending all this time getting everything set up and we're slowly testing it. Um, do these interviews at our level of quality. Now, content, that's a different thing, but our level of quality is something that we strive for, something that you actually bit, bit want right. to, Yeah. Fidelity. That's yes. the word. Really. Yeah, <laughs> yes. there, there you go. It's high fidelity garbage, <laughs> right, but it's still garbage. Right, right, right. It's in UHD. And um, so I'm going to be trying to simplify the networking setup in here because it's currently, I would say, uh, Mom's spaghetti? Sketchy would be a disservice to the word um it it technically works because we had to experiment with ndi and we don't have a ton of money to burn like we can't throw money at it and it's kind of stuck stitched together but yes very much the um get everything down from like these 13 cables running to i'm tempted to just go on ebay and buy a bunch of like used server equipment which is always a bad idea i'm going to try to get stuff with warranties on it it's going to be a little more reliable um move everything over to uh 10 gigabit SFP, which is a billion times cheaper than trying to do it with 10 gig copper. But that way we can get everything over one cable instead of having this monster like switch router mess. Dread, dreadlock. <laughs> Reducing points of failure while also giving us redundancy, having a backup system, which always makes me hell happy. If you want to help out with that, we do have a wish zone. Go look at there and tell me you've made bad decisions on hardware. I always look forward to that. It makes me happy. How about you, Jordan? Ah, uh, well, I'm making lots of lots of bad decisions. What well, the first and foremost is, I started messing around with NetJack. I learned I, today. I learned that the documentation lies to you, which probably explains why none of that shit worked when I tested it out to begin with. So I, I learned that. Also, I, I, I bought a house. Um, that the the process is hey. over and done with. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you yes. Bought a house. I, 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 I bought a house for one million, one million, one thousand dollars, one point zero zero one million dollars. No, because okay. like, like fu- fuck me, they're not yeah. they're not going to drop to nine nine nine. Me, me and you fuck it around <laughs> in like episode five of Linux Gamecast Weekly, and like so, yeah, uh, you'll end up saying you just bought a million dollar house. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> in your parents' basement going, mm, nah, mm, I'm not. Nah. I'm not. <laughs> Mo- the the moral of the story is it's still cheaper than rent. Right. In Toronto. <laughs> Teardrop. <laughs> so uh, what's new with you outside of your Roblox? Well, uh, that's not new either, but uh, I actually got a couple of new things in. I got one of them uh, USB testers, which... Did you order that has... before or after we talked about it? Uh, It was yesterday. Nori wanted to order something and it's like, oh, is that from Amazon? Okay, and these two things. Okay, and one of them was we this. We were absolutely <laughs> talking about that on Wednesday. I'm like, yeah, that's something I always wanted to buy. I've just never thought about doing it. Pedro's like, look what I got. Oh, I mean, fine. You can have <laughs> no, it. it. I don't want one the, now. You have one. <laughs> it was uh, it was on my wish list for a while. It's just, okay, next time I buy something off Amazon, I'll get that too. But yeah, it has three ins, actually. Uh, this one, it has a Type-C in, another Type-C for pass-through, and then it's got the um, output Type-A. And yeah, it does a, it's got a very nice, very readable, very bright um, screen on it, which, yeah, it, blow, blow, it blow, blow. does what it says on the tin. <laughs> blow up. And... It doesn't. Uh, and the other one was this, which uh, <laughs> looks wait, like a remote up. controller that, <laughs> until you flip it over. <laughs> that's just... What? What is... That, 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 it's that, that a is, mouse. That is, <laughs> it's that, an that air is, mouse. <laughs> that is that, fumbling around at night to change the channel and accidentally <laughs> sending your mama hate speech. Ladies and gentlemen, that, that, that <laughs> yeah. is just anger and confusion incarnate. What type of batteries is this? Take? Uh, do is it wind up? Eh? Is it wind up, man? No, it takes uh uh triple A? Yeah. Two triple A's. Two triple A's? All right. What's the range on it? Yeah. Is it Bluetooth? I, no, it's uh two point four gigahertz uh oh. Wi-Fi's. But so, uh it's really nice that it works with the uh Raspberry Pi type A. And I was surprised because the accelerometer in here, it actually does pick up the movements very accurately and there's some acceleration that i'd like to get rid of there's probably a way to do it uh but yeah it's surprisingly accurate for something that costs like 10 pounds i did not expect that to be the case at all <laughs> fo- fo- follow-up question though what's the range on it if you throw it yeah you'll find out uh <laughs> not, yeah no yeah. this apartment's too small <laughs> Don't worry, there will be a moment when he requires his attention, and that's within grabbing distance of... I just hope at that point it hits the foam. <laughs> I hope your head hits the foam. Oh, that's... man. <laughs> <sighs> if we could only toss the horse like that. Well, I mean, the horse is completely falling apart. It's just the big gelatinous mass that we like to spread on your computer monitors every week. It's the Steam Update! Oh, baby, it's that time of the month again where we talk about the top selling games from the last month. Um, so scrolling down this list, um, you might have to go all the way to the bottom to find Fuda Fix Dick Dine and Dash. That is all. <laughs> oh, they um, got the, uh, I, <laughs> I didn't know Red Dead was online. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, they they have an online version. Yeah, the only the only actual Linux game in this time around is uh, Monster Sanctuary. Unfortunately, the aforementioned game does not have a Linux version. It's Windows only. I just like the fact that it's on the list. It tickles me. Yeah, it is the uh, Futanari uh, genre particularly uh, uh, underrepresented? Because no, because cy- Cyberpunk is there. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dick, Dine, and Dash. Okay, I'm not even bothered with that. Man. Right, right. <laughs> like, 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 I, like I said, it, I'm just surprised. It, it doesn't surprise me that it's on Steam. I'm just surprised it's on the list. But you know what? Congrats to the dev. Apparently right. you did good. Yeah. So 100% on that. That's always good to see. But we got a little controversy uh, over yes. in Controller City, and it's all about... Mm, 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 yes, Gabe's nipples, the area well, of controller. Actually, no. It's a, it's not about the nipples. It's about the butt. Um. So, um. Yeah, and that's that's the problem. The Steam controller has those two little back paddles, and apparently, uh, that was patented by a company called Ironbug. Who, by the way, their CEO is named Duncan Ironmonger, and that's just a very strong name. I, I just feel you need to know this. Um. <laughs> you you might you might think, hey, uh, there's an Xbox controller that has 
paddles as well. Apparently, Microsoft has actually licensed the patent from this company. Um, they did oh. warn. They did warn Valve that they feel that their copyright is being infringed. Valve's response, if you go to the Law 360 article, because uh, this is just a very brief summary. They have the. They have a lot more details in the source linked in the article. All of that is in the show notes, by the way. Uh, Valve is saying the original patent has the buttons like outside of the controller, sort of like how the Microsoft has Microsoft one has it where there's sort of like a, like a, like a clutch or whatever. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Valve says, well, theirs are implemented as like, it's in, it's inside the controller. It's the battery plate. That's actually the button. This is a different design. It's similar. So this, this, this is the, the two sides right now. Uh, iron bug maintains that, uh, iron bug maintains that, oh, well, this is just a case of big companies like throwing the red around and like screwing over the little guys. Valve says, well, I mean, ours is very clearly different. You can't just patent buttons. And the whole, the whole notion of like patenting this interface stuff is really stupid to begin with. You have like Apple patenting bezeled edges and stuff like that. But this, this is, yeah. this is another one of these things. So they, but at the same time, they may be well be within their rights. They came up with this idea allegedly if they filed the patent then they have the rights to the ip so it's it's just a bit weird to start this at the point where you know the steam controller has been discontinued since 2019 oh also so, also the article mentions it as a pricey pad it was 50 dollars on launch and it came with the copy of rocket league that's pretty cheap. Yeah, no, th- as far as, uh, you know, other controllers go, it's actually about on par. So, yeah, it's the it, it's just a timing that feels a little bit off to me. And also, isn't this the definition of a patent troll? Because mm. I looked up this company and, uh, oh, what do you guys do? And the very <laughs> first result on Google was their patent listing. Mm hmm. Oh, it's so, one of those companies. Yeah, yeah, okay. The timing, <laughs> the timing makes sense for, okay, the Areola controller. Let me see how many times I can set this down and pick it up during this. Um, <laughs> it's gone. It's a thing of the past. You know, they went on fire sale. I have two of these. I have a spare one that's new in box that I really should sell on eBay because people are paying like 70 bucks for them. Um, that's no longer being made. It's a discontinued product. So if if I'm doing the um, napkin math on that, that's just as geeky as it sounds too. Napkin math, kids. I'm like, you know what? I bet Valve would probably just cut us a check instead of um, fighting for this in court because they're not making it anymore. I'm like, yeah, all right, fine, whatever, go away. Here's some hush money. Shoot. <laughs> Could be. Yeah, the, 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 the other thing, too, is that legal timelines don't necessarily line up with real life timelines. Mm-hmm. There could have been stuff happening behind the scenes for years that we don't know about because it's hush hush legal discussions. And now it's gotten to the point where these guys are saying, OK, if Valve's not going to play ball, now we actually have to sue them. So not a lot of information available at the moment. More is going to be uncovered in discovery. We'll probably hear something about it in the next. It's years. definitely going to be interesting because <laughs> we talked about last week with Valve and the um, cross borders regional pricing thing in the EU. Uh, Valve is like. Get wrecked. Here's the money. Mm. Like, I, I don't think you're going to be able to do Yeah, no, Valve yeah. has fine, got fine, uh, the cost of doing fuck business. you and your friend and your entire lawyer team money. <laughs> so, German uh, game, zombies, yes. danger. Germany has had a bit of a sordid history when it comes to video games. Uh, a lot of them are just outright refused classification and cannot be sold there. Uh, and some of them will try to work around this by releasing a censored version. One of those games was Left 4 Dead 2. And that has been uh, recently uh, overturned. And uh, there's been a little update, uh, which if you're uh, one of the owners of the game in Germany, there's a free DLC to update the game if you wish to do so. Uh, Yeah, that's that's very good to see. I did have a look at the uh, Wikipedia list for all of the... um, the games that were refused classification in Germany, 111 out of which only 22 have had the ban lifted. A lot of them went with uh, censored versions, but only 22 had the ban actually lifted. And at least... I, n- I know Germany has like restrictions on like showing Nazi symbology and stuff like that. What was what was what was actually the the subject matter at issue here? Do you know? Blood and gore. Uh, yeah, what, what, mostly blood gore. And gore. Blood and gore. Okay. You monster! I know you Canadians <laughs> hunger for flesh and violence, but 
Yeah, some countries the, the, are the, the, the zombies it, it, flying it's, off. It's and, our national yeah. sport, hockey and lacrosse. I like that <laughs> there's going to be um, available as DLC. It's something you can just add on. You don't have to redownload the entire game, which I'm like, good, because you got to patch it in. And it's like what what I said with this. I mean, people have been waiting a decade to play Left 4 Dead 2. You know, it's like spins do, right? Like, have you lost your damn mind? This is crazy talk. This is insane. <laughs> and like, let's go, let's go fuck up. But some a zombies. decade isn't you know, terrible when you look at, say, another game that was only released, uh, that only had the band lifted in 2020, which was Mortal Kombat, the original, the 1992 one. Well, yeah, it, it was 28 years. <laughs> I played Mortal Kombat and then I murdered my entire family, Pedro, I, I and makes people violent. If every time I hear Mortal Kombat, I had it for the Sega CD, which had forced you to watch like this postage stamp Mortal commercial, like for the game. And of course, oh yeah, it's like hi- hyper interlaced. Dude, like. it was on a one. It's a Sega CD, man. It's a one by one CD ROM. It was rough, even on like four by three little tiny TV. Um, yeah. So uh, we got an update for a game that I think we all kind of, I even kind of liked it, man, even though it was a roguelite. Yeah. So. <laughs> it is a uh, scourge breaker. Uh, we did throw chairs at it a while back. And uh, this new update brings a couple of different things. There's adaptive difficulty. There's uh, an achievement menu in the game. There's a stats menu uh, Where also in game in the Nexus computer. I think that's neat when it works right yeah, and the way that they're doing it is kind of interesting, but I'm going to let Jordan, since he's already uh, taken a deep breath. <laughs> uh, I, I was just going to say some opinion, some adaptive difficulty hot takes. I didn't, I didn't have it. But yeah, they, they essentially what's happening is, oh, if you're sucking at the game, they're going to make the enemies easier. If you're doing better at the game, they're going to make the enemies harder. Uh, I'm, accessibility is a weird topic in gaming because, like, yes, sometimes the challenge is part of the game, but... Sometimes people don't want to like commit hours to like mastering the pixel perfect jumps on a single level. So I get it. Um, the the other nice thing they added here is you can save and exit during runs. This is a thing I hate in games. Mm-hmm. Where like I wish like I don't I don't intend to save scum necessarily, but sometimes I gotta go and I don't want to leave my computer on for like two days while I'm taking care of other stuff. Um, so being able to save and quit in the middle of a run, kind of nice. Uh, yeah. and uh, oh. the uh, I think the way that they're doing the uh, adaptive difficulty is very very nice because there's always been that argument of say making the game easier there's you know the elite crowd the don't make darks don't give dark souls an easy mode crowd and then there's everyone else who just doesn't care or and then there's even the other people it's like i'd probably enjoy playing that game if it wasn't so hard so i think this one actually makes everyone uh, on all sides of the argument very happy because those bits that you're having trouble with become easier and the bits that you're doing really good at so if you're doing really good through the whole thing everything becomes harder so the that particular uh first crowd probably be happy with that too <laughs> i guess one of the questions I, that you could bring up legitimately with this is adaptive difficulty in a roguelite because it's like get good scrub randomly i it, it i mostly uh, randomizes uh, also map jordan's out. fine <laughs> what is the longest yes. you've left ftl open on your computer a day mm. um, oh, so amnesia machine for pegs is still winning is what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. That, so that one was on TV box and that was in the background and I completely <laughs> forgot that was because that because like it's the TV box, right? We don't shut that off. That's just there to play video game videos. Um, I, I, I don't know, because like uh, to, to your point about like difficulty settings, like there, there are definitely people who like have coordination issues like their hands don't necessarily respond. And should they not be allowed to experience these games and like ingest the story? It There's there's a whole number of reasons why someone would elect for an easier mode. It's not just oh because they suck so yeah indeed so i was actually curious from probably like two weeks ago we 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 were getting down to games that have been in perpetual early access i'm like man this well's running dry we gotta get something new to rag on and it's like you know what whatever happened to no more room in hell and they're like hey vin what and they bitch slap me i'm like we've already released this game you dumbass so uh (laughs) on top of that (laughs) There's 1.113 is out. Now, this is zombie survival horror and all that. And they've had a Logix version since forever ago, the long, long ago. And um, I have no idea when I hit 1.0. I need to look around a little bit more. But anyway, killing yourself by console is no longer flagged. 
as a custom suicide. And that's the important bit with this update. And I think really the one takeaway that you should have. Also, um, Pedro, I did notice it is now supporting proper Portuguese localization. Mm -hmm. Um, That's debatable. (laughs) But it's good to have all kinds of localization. The Portuguese, the Czech, the simplified Chinese. No no, 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 no one (laughs) knows. Portuguese localization right there. I I, I just like that nobody knows who did the Czech localization. I don't remember. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> nice. Um, it just showed up. It just showed up one day. I think I asked for it. Mm. Right. No. No one's taking credit for it. So. So uh, this this reminds me of a uh, like nest days, man. Ninja Ness. Yeah, uh, Cyber Shadow. Uh, it's another yacht club joint. Uh, you might remember Ooh. them from such games as Hollow. Uh, not yeah, uh, Shovel Knight. Not Hollow Knight. Uh, <laughs> What what one, one of the night <laughs> the games. other nights? Yes, yes. Come on, we might um, want to get them on the show. <laughs> Let's get it right. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So um, it lo- it looks like this time instead of uh, doing sort of like a Castlevania, they're doing more of a Shinobi or a Ninja Gaiden uh, type thing. So yeah, um, it's available now. You can pick it up for twenty five bucks. I don't. Again, when I, when I see when I see games like this, I think, oh, twenty five bucks is a high asking price. But Yacht Club also has like a pretty high quality bar, so yeah, like if if this is if this is your jam, if you were like super into Shinobi or Ninja Gaiden uh, back in the day, you'll probably get a kick out of this for sure. I, I'm kind of like on that list of like ooh, I could probably really like this game, but then again, you look at it like visually, like ah, that really does look a lot like the games I was playing 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Does that still merit the thirty dollar, well, twenty dollar price tag in freedom dollars? But I, I, it might happen. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if, if, my, no, if, I'll tell you if, what. If, if, All right, how about this? What if they have mul- online multiplayer? Then all of a sudden, does that change the equation for you? Yes. Yes. But they don't. But they don't. It's, it's single player only. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, one of the things that I've been noticing is more of a, an existential uh, conundrum for me uh, is cyber to do craft. Because a few years ago, you had. Uh, Minecraft, world of cybercraft world of warcraft and then all of a sudden you had a bunch of craft games that just tacked the craft at the end for reasons and now we have cyber everything is cyber are, cyber. are, are you trying to say that craft is getting a little <laughs> cheesy overused <laughs> I, I don't know i, I, th- I think it's, i think it's people like coming to terms with the fact that we do exist in the cyberpunk dystopia like uh and and trying to make some art about it like the next game yeah. in koja um yeah this, this, the the steam segment is a bit of a jordan sandwich i opened it up and then i closed it Mm-mm, bread um yeah so uh it's a point and click adventure game uh set in neo berlin 2062 you can do it's kind of cutesy and you can do like cutesy cyberpunk it does it's exist cutesy. Um, oh damn yeah yeah uh if you've ever watched metropolis by uh tezuma the the guy who did astro boy that's like a very cutesy cyberpunk story that's also like pretty dark so there there it's 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 a line you gotta walk it you gotta tiptoe over it a little bit but this looks like it's solid um the art direction definitely hits the mark it looks like a very very well done uh point and click uh but again we're not too friendly to point and clicks in and around here uh mainly i, I mean i i personally don't find them like super engaging i know pedro and men don't either but if it's your gym this looks like a pretty good one it is a little pricey though it's as- they're asking for 30 canadian um this is one of the things like just watching the screenshots don't do it justice because up until then i'd not watched any of the um videos with it that's that tells a whole different story and like the mm-hmm. time energy and effort that have mm-hmm. went into producing this because that that's a different story than what you see in just like 2D representation on the screenshots. Or just in like a static image or something. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I could see it. I mean, I think that 30 bucks of work went into this. And if you like the point and click story driven adventure, pos- you know, some puzzles and that eventually boils down to like, fuck it. Click grid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but some people get really invested in the stories and this looks right. like it could be a good story. So. Def- definitely give it a look coming up next nvidia has a new laptop they want you to buy and intel has a new motherboard they want you to buy with a video card and a processor and how about we take a little bit of a break to let you all know just how awesome you are and then beg for you to uh help us you know 
Prostrate yourself. <laughs> Prostrate yourself. Particular this particular bit of uh, internet insanity. What we bring you every single week. It's uh, maybe worth. I don't he's know. He's tuckered out. He's been playing Roblox. He, he has. <laughs> he's, he's, he's been. He's been. He's been, been ten. He's he's been playing World of Cybercraft, and now now his brain is a block. Oh no. <laughs> If you if you if you want to donate to Pedro's medical treatment to bring his brain back to its standard sphere shape, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. It's the best way to pay for Pedro's medical bills. Now we're uh, you take even, a chunk out of his head on the um Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, you you get you get some cool stuff in return, right? Like um for for a dollar you get access to the Discord uh channel. You can listen to the pre pre super shows and which is this extra podcast we do on Saturdays at seven thirty to eight thirty, yeah. where I guess this week we talked about Netflix. Jack a lot. There's a lot of we, net jack related You're going to get some stuff like that if you're curious about what goes on behind the scenes here. That's going to happen. Like we were genuinely sitting in a dock where you, like you could pop in and like watch like, hey, we'll yeah. try this and try this and some of the yeah. things and uh, some of the networking stuff that we got planned. And uh, yeah, that's a cool yeah. show, believe it or not. Indeed. Uh, and it's different every week. We're always talking about different random stuff. Um, you can also get a... Um, you can also get a lot of video feed for the pre pre super shows. And if you are a high enough donor, um, like Ben said, getting access to the show notes, even buying your way on the damn show. If you really want, um, even if you're not a game developer who wants to come on and do a little interview, we got to thank Zeno, uh, Zeno increased mm-hmm. their pledge and yeah, has access to the live pre pre super shows and, and the show notes. So yeah, that's one thing that Zeno has when he's not chasing tortoises. Or that having is Achilles chase brilliant. A bunch of different levels to play around with. Uh, we also have things like uh, Jordan and Pedro have like Amazon wish zones. You're like, well, that's silly. I'm like, no, 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 no. We made a game of it. If you get them anything um, silly, they have you get to send a little card, and I'm going to make them read it. And it's yes. kind of it, it, it hasn't bit us yet, but I have faith in you a lot because you were a bunch of psychopaths. <laughs> There's also <laughs> Mr. one. Mr. Fox Dog tried. It is. Uh, well, he has. <laughs> There's also one for the studio. If you're curious, uh, if you want to judge some ideas that I have. One thing I'm working on is Project Pew Pew. It's to simplify our uh, networking setup, but you'll end up back here on this wall for all eternity or until the wall falls and kills me in my sleep because I sleep in here. Maybe I don't. Probably shouldn't. I don't think I could go to sleep in here. I, you know, that that's maybe next Friday's live stream. No, nope, yeah, probably good. And oh, you know what? We do we do live streams. If you're a Patreon, you get to show up and play multiplayer games with us when we do those. So basically, that's, that's, at the end of the day, um, how does that work? If you get 16 quarters a month to spare. We can stick them together and uh, we're going to improve what we Maybe. do. We're trying to get better, better equipment, better hardware, especially since we're going to start bringing people in the show, hopefully every week, if not every week, at least every other week. Uh, we want to make it the best experience for us and for them and for you at home. Also, if you would like to um, disrobe yourself. We, uh, yeah, we, we got a store. Store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy some t-shirts or barring that some stickers to put over your naughty bits. Maybe mm. a mask, maybe a coffee cup, maybe a hoodie. If you want to really tell people how big of a mayonnaise fan you are. Um, we, got, we got anything else we got to plug? Um, did, 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 did we give away the copy of Mad Max? I don't think anybody took us up on it because everybody ah. skips over there like, oh no. Uh, ah. <laughs> So <laughs> I, they're doing uh, the shilling. So let's just skip exactly. that. Exactly, <laughs> and we, we're happy enough to put the timestamps there available. If you're watching us live after the fact, podcasts and all that fun stuff. But I look forward to like two years from now. We're gonna get a comment like, "Hey," yeah. and I'm like, "Hey, right. yours, still right? up. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if we still got the keys." So speaking of shilling, mm-hmm. Pedro, start shilling for Nvidia, please. Uh, how about I don't? <laughs> Do it because anyways. I was the one who bought the 970, and I'm still bitter about that. But uh, if you uh, have a 970 or anything that was released uh, past the Fermi era, you will probably want this particular uh, driver that just came out, version 460.39, if you're tracking the... Uh, the run files uh it adds support for the 3080 Mom, laptop 3070 compute texture in it. yeah basically laptop uh, gpus and the gt 1010 
Yes. <laughs> and uh, they also updated the driver to restore some of the functionality that um, was kind of borked with kernel 5.10. So that's, it. if you're yeah. running 5.10, that's kind so, of a, a thing. So that so that specifically, though, the uh, SOIX, again, is the um, instant, uh, is the instant suspend resume stuff that you find in a lot of Tegra SOCs. Every time I see driver updates for that, I just wrap that tinfoil tighter and tighter <laughs> around my head because <laughs> nvidia is making a really badass arm cpu for laptops you guys i believe it <laughs> that could be a thing one of the things i like to see it in this is uh you know we all have words about nvidia mm-hmm. and some of their practices you gotta give them credit credits to do though the 30 series laptops are rolling out drivers are ready it's not, mm. yep. hey, look, there's a new chipset. Maybe in six to eight months, I'll be able to play a game on it. <laughs> no, that's going to be there. Um, out of the box, and I'm kind of interested. No one seems like they're terribly blown away by the um, 30 series laptop, plus the naming's hella confusing on top of that. But mm-hmm. everyone here is seeing performance gains of about 15, 25%, which I guess is better than nothing. For- for laptops, that's still pretty good, right? Like yeah. you're you're already dealing with like pretty slim performance margins. So every every frame counts, right? But hey, let's, let's be real. It's not like you can buy. We were talking in the previous super shows and I'm looking at things like the, oh, I really like to get the 3060 for 12 gigs for video rendering and all that. But I, I look at a 3060 right now uh, is the same way I look at like the $6,000 quadros. That, and I'm like, I, I can't get you either one. So they're the same thing right now. And it's going to be that way for the foreseeable future, unfortunately. Yeah. Indeed. Hey, uh, Intel. Yeah, and Intel's going to fix our video card woes, right, on <laughs> we, AMD. We were all excited for Intel <laughs> when Intel announced that we're, we're going to be doing discrete GPUs. This is not a repeat from, geez, when was that, like 2000? The, 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 the Knight's Corner one, the, the, the array of Pentium 3s. Right. Uh, way back when, we're like, cool. Player 3 legitimately entered the game. Competition, good in this market space. And um, Intel's got something for us. This is... You know, this is not the exciting thing, man. This is, uh, you know, something that you're going to give to a, uh, your Dells, your HPs and stuff like that. And, you know, it's passively cool and all that fun stuff. This is the first thing we're seeing with the Z graphics, uh, DG1 GPU on the ZLP architecture. And I'm like, all right, well, that's thing, whatever. And I'm just reading through it. I'm like, okay. <sighs> then you get down to the thing where, by the way, this only works on certain Intel CPUs with a certain BIOS. Get yeah. wrecked. Special Intel. UEFI BIOS is get required wrecked. for the NXT. 100% get wrecked all work. in your <laughs> bunny suit. Dun, 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 face, man. <laughs> yeah. So, so, here, here, so no, no, knowing how Intel likes to do shit, I would not be surprised if they were strict to get to a chipset and BIOS versions because there's some sneaky high bandwidth channel that they snuck into that latest chipset that allows them to do some shared memory stuff to actually squeeze performance out. Though I guarantee you, they have a skew of this that will run perfectly fine on a Ryzen box because they know the the backlash is coming. I don't know. Intel. I don't know. Maybe they just do, they're too embarrassed to allow it on systems with where the integrated graphics are faster than this. Well, and, and, and that's what I'm thinking. There's like a lot of shared memory stuff that like Iris GPUs already do. So I'm pretty this? sure there's there's something in there with Pedro, the chipset bias. I software. have a question for you. What if this is just like the working part of like uh, some busted ass chips that they're putting out on the market that the, oh, in, probably. the, the integrated graphics are like, <laughs> ah, not so hot, but hey, with this one little trick. <laughs> Yeah, well, if we disable all the CPU cores in this uh, See, I, that, used to be. I think you're giving uh, too much credit. I think this is like the ones that are just knackered from. Like, <laughs> so, so, uh, some, yeah. Someone took but, a pair of kitchen yeah. scissors and cut like the, the CPU off these like integrated GPUs. This is effectively just an IGP in a discrete package. Why? Because Intel. And um, this kind of puts the whole GT 1010 release of a few weeks ago in perspective because Nvidia was probably aware that Intel was going to release this and they went, oh yeah, we should release something to compete with that. Boom. G- uh, GT 710 rebranded as GT 1010. There. So so it, it does bear pointing out that when <laughs> Intel was talking about the initial uh, the initial releases for their dedicated video cards, they were saying they're going to be doing lower power stuff. It's going to be add-on cards. It's going to be not what the gamers are hoping for. They're probably targeted at GP, GPU, and Enterprise and stuff like this. Um, that said, though, Intel probably has something in their back pocket because, of course, they do. They're Intel. They have billions of dollars to just burn on shit. Which they have, and it has been shit recently. So... 
Um, check this out. Maybe you do some gaming on Linux and you're watching this show. Maybe there's some weird ass connection there. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. But um, if you're buying, you know, Linux out of the box and you want something that's going to be well supported, you might be tempted to go with System76. You know, they got good hardware and they got good support. Well, they've released a guide to teach you how to game on their flavor of the Debians and the Ubuntu's called Pop OS. And this is all about just getting started, man. And check this out. This is basically a beginner's guide. You know, it tells you what the hell a Proton is, and it's going to give you the differences between native versus Steam Play. You know, how to sort out if a game runs by going and checking Proton DB. And I'm like, all right, that's good, good, good. Tips on how to contract Lutris, which is, that's nice. <laughs> I'm glad to see that. And some suggestions, which I was really happy to see, for what types of CPU, GPU you should get for what types of games you might be going for. And to, like, super big credits, you know, I was like, oh, there's the marketing pitch now. No, they're just straight up saying, hey, man, maybe you want to look at an i5 or a Ryzen. There's no links in here trying to sell you anything. They're just being good. Hey, is NVMe good? What about 4K monitors? What about mouse acceleration? All that fun stuff. But the most important part, the best part of this <laughs> is down here at the bottom because there's a link Very to is. Linux yes. Yes. <laughs> This is the most critical thing in the entire, this is the most important thing that you'll find in this article is a link to our web zone and YouTube channel. So indeed, yeah, I think John did that, didn't he? Pro- probably, uh, J- John. John definitely <laughs> contributed to it because the 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 blog post is from uh, Gerbware. I don't know if that's the shared account, um, but yeah, uh, there is there is something of a sales pitch in there. But it, like Vince said, it's at the very end. It's not like, oh, well, you can explore these options on the System seventy six store. They're saying, well, do I need to worry about drivers? And they're like, no, man, the poo poo's got you. If you buy a System seventy six uh, computer, or if you're just gonna install pop, if you're just gonna install pop. We got we got an AMD version. We got an Intel yeah. version. Takes care of it for you. You don't need to worry, pretty little head. So that that's a pr- that's a pretty good sales push after going through all this. So I wonder how many like sales calls they get to deal with. Like, what was the first thing you did with your system set? I installed Arch. Like, <laughs> oh oh, apparently we got we we got we got some behind the scenes stuff. Apparently, John had uh, asked them to include don't use a trackball for gaming. So, <laughs> Ben Stone. <laughs> no, but uh, as far as like articles uh, describing, here's how you game on Linux Go. This is great. This is amazing. Pedro, this, this is doesn't so much mention better. anything. So much better than that. You know, Hackaday, when they were talking about. Uh, you know your Linux gaming box, man, like, <laughs> or, or anything posted on said I'm talking, No, I'm just saying. I'm how could they tore us a new one? And that's I don't even want to bring up what you know the creators of the TriCast or New Tech did in that blog post about <laughs> using NDI in gaming from our web zone. They just that is, that's uh, those are repressed memories. I'm talking about the articles we've covered in the past on uh, what's the best Linux distro for gaming, where Play, Play on, on Linux. Linux was a distribution. Play on Linux. That's what I'm is. talking about. Listen, man, I. <laughs> I was looking up commonly searched keywords and I get paid by the <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Click on my link. Ah, oh, that, that's cute. You think they get paid. They're, oh, they're getting paid in exposure. So uh, yeah. last week I talked about, you know, getting my hipster pixels on because there was a decompilation of Sonic CD. And Sega. Kind of interesting to effectively play Sonic CD natively. You know, it's a 2011 release in this data bits so I was pulling off Steam, but building the engine running it natively on Linux. Well, that's just the beginning of the story because now uh, there's Sonic 1, 2, 2013 decompilation. It's a bit around because this is version 1.1.0. Now, to get the data bits for this, I mean, this is just, you know, change log, fixing some little things, big things, sideways things. In order to play this, you're not going to go to Steam. You're not going to go to Epic. You wouldn't go there anyway. And uh, you're not going to be heading over to Itch. Nay, because to get the data bits for this, you're going to need the uh, APK for Android from Google Play or Amazon. Oof. Or iOS via the App Store if you're super brave. And um, Which I first thought. Which I first thought, man. Like, legitimately. I'm like, I bet that looks rough. And I'm like, Vin, it's 2021. And this is... the. <laughs> pixel game i'm sure it can swing it <laughs> that's what you think i don't know man. um yeah. I, I was up to that point i'm like eh, yeah. my give a fuck a meter kind of gave up when i got it's like i don't feel like getting an apk and pulling that off and, yeah. and doing that but hey man more stuff 
Yeah, this re- this release does have some stuff. It won't put your Linux to sleep, which I think no. is the important one. This is this has been a thing where I, I ran into this with remote play, where if you have X screensaver enabled in it, or X screensaver enabled, remote play will just cut out in the middle of your game when the screensaver kicks in. It's amazing. Fun times. Yes. So do we got to Oh, geez, this is weird. <laughs> oh, yeah, but it's 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 real cool. Uh, so uh, freedomgameplanet.com links to this are in our show notes. But someone, some psychopath has decided, let's let's reimplement Castlevania one in doom. So, yeah, uh, Simon's Destiny. It's you can download it. It requires GZ doom to get up and running. I got it up and running in like three seconds, so it's not too bad. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's doom, but it's, it's Castlevania. All the enemies are Castlevania enemies. You have like a whip and you have all the Castlevania power ups and they've done a pretty good job of like converting all of the Castlevania levels into doom levels. This is why having engine source is a good thing because then people will make, take your thing and make other cool shit. So, yeah, uh, it's free. You can check it out and download it. It's pretty easy to get up and running. It's very cross-platform. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, just to make this clear, Pedro, I got dibs on this. <laughs> for, the, for, the, uh, for the live stream? Yep. All right. Yeah, you could, you could absolutely do it. Uh, I did, much like Jordan, yeah, I just downloaded the, um, I think it's a, an EP. PSK3 uh, file and you just run GZ Doom and you point it at the file and it goes, oh, hey, you're playing. It's, or, yeah. Or it, just, it just, is. just CD to the directory GZ Doom and it'll be like, oh, do you want to play this right. thing? Yeah. Yep. Dude, that's very <laughs> awesome. It's awesome. Uh, all this is going to be in our show notes, so go check them out there at lightningsteamcast.com. Hey, Plex. Plex is a thing, man. And Plex <gasps> has got a brilliant idea for you, kids. It's called the Plex Pass Subscription. For what? But I th- video games, Finn? What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm talking about video games, son. This, if you're a Plex Pass subscriber, you, you can add the arcade category, which is an extra three wet, stinky American caches a month. Or if you just want to subscribe for it now, really, you made a video about this. All right, fine. I'll buy it. Um, it's $5 um, per month. There's also a free seven day trial. Now you can use this for mobile, browser, or your Mapple TV. That's the thing. 27 games are going to be included. Within the subscription from, and these games are going to be from the 2600 and 7800. So, oh yeah. Oh, boy. For those of you that look at the NES and like, oh, man, that shit's too mainstream. <laughs> I'm going to be um, uh, My first thought, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you guys, 90s, you guys 90s test. It. Yeah. Oh, 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 baby. I got to say this. Yeah. I got to say this because I was thinking about this, you know. Plex is a thing, you know about it. And you've probably set it up if you're like me from way back in the day, you were setting up Myth TV. My Plex box in the basement has been powered off uh, probably for the better part of two years. I just it, streaming is getting good enough, and the well, more importantly, is the like content on streaming is passable to where if I, I want something to watch real quick, I do it that way. The need to have centralized media in the house is kind of a thing of the past, which ties into that. If I'm doing that, other people are doing that. I'm like, I, I yeah. don't have a dedicated hardware right. in the house anymore to even run this unless I can just run it through a browser without having to have any type yeah. of Plex anything. Swift on security was making a joke. It's like, no one cares about your old sci-fi channel 480p Stargate rips. <laughs> <laughs> still, they still have the logo in the corner. But yeah, like, who the fuck cares about Atari games? Rip rip the Atari VCS, right? Like, now people can just play Arkanoid on, 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 on their phones, right? So well, yeah, you, you just make sure you select <laughs> Linux Teamcast Weekly. We'll need a uh, name, email, yeah. and subject. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, speaking of, speaking of the uh, VCS, though, someone got their bits on one, oh, and sure. uh, they they tore it apart. And uh, there's a video that you can watch. The link to that is in our show notes. Hey, man, uh, I saw that uh, Steve from the Gamers Nexus did it, but that he's like, and I'm getting two videos out of this motherfucker. So <laughs> tune in next week for the benchmarks. <laughs> but I'm like, nah, somebody's got him. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, some, someone tore it apart. Like, it just has a pretty standard ETA board on it. ETA Prime on YouTube. There. ETA Prime. Yes. Um, but, yeah, the, they, they do the board teardown. It takes some laptop RAM. It has the Ryzen SoC. You can plug an NVMe in there. So that's pretty cool. Um, and. And yeah, all things considered, it's not a bad little system for what you're going to be paying for, um, which is a good thing because literally the only reason people are buying these is for the hardware. No it's one gives a shit about fuck it. Fuck mothering Windows on it out of the box. Uh, uh, yep. th- this this guy yeah, is. No, I'm, I'm installing Linux it. on it. Can you yeah. imagine? <laughs> I, I saw this and I, I looked at this and I'm like, 
How broken are you? You need like weird fucked up things like to get like GPU memory. Data. It's like, what? What? Defend this. Welcome to Windows where you need to download the random EXE off the internet to get information. The most basic information about your system. Indeed. Do you think it's going to be good enough to play with, man? Because, you know, oh, yeah. for me, the VCS, it, it looks like the backers. This is what I've always said, man. Please, Flying Spaghetti Monster, let the backers get the hardware that they paid for. After that, what else? You know, if they make enough for everyone, that'll be neat. What are these clocking in it? Like 300 bucks? Thereabouts? Something like that. Yeah, 299 for the base version. 399 if you want the two joysticks. Okay, so <laughs> 299 And uh, I don't think anyone wants these to play classic Atari games. We look at that and we're like, okay, AMD, SOC, uh, what, NDMA we can swap out, Maram we can swap out, decent form factor. Is it shouty? Not particularly. Hmm. Then it, then we go to like part B and it's like, so what am I going to do with it? Yeah, it's like, th- this is going to be a set-top box, or this is going to be, which, I mean, I I, I sort of, that I think that was always part of the value-add proposition for the VCS to begin with. That's why they're, like, you don't need this level of hardware to actually fucking run Atari games, right? No. They're, they're, but the, they know people will be like, ooh, Ryzen SoC, let me, uh, let me, let me like one of these. Yeah, an x86 what? AMD SoC. I don't think Atari emulator is the use case here. Uh, the people, you're, you're, the moment people get their mitts on it, it's like, oh, you're going to be emulating a heck of a lot more. Your, your, your TI graphing calculator can play Atari games. So this is going to be some motherfucker just like get bent, pitfall, bitch. Pitfall. <laughs> a, 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 HD remake of pitfall. Pitfall. Pitfalls. Pitfalls, man. You fall into a ball pit. <laughs> Listen, if you or someone you know is suffering from pitfalls, please contact a doctor. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that's going to do it for the news. Coming up next, we got an interview with El Jefe from Toe Jam and Earl. Still in the groove. Hot. Yes, he- hello. Welcome to the Chairquisition. Once again, we're not subjecting a game to the Chairquisition. We're subjecting a human. This is El Jefe, the uh, lead <laughs> engineer on uh, Toe Jam and Earl. Back in the groove. Is that legit? Uh, you are the one responsible for um, bringing Tojem and Earl back in the groove and the new update. Um, still in the groove. Yes. That's right. Too it's kind of labor of love at this point. Oh, right on. So if you don't know, if you've been living under a rock, man, Tojem and Earl, I think there's very few video games that you can refer to as have achieved something of a cult classic status. Like everyone knows Tojem and Earl. Even if you've you're not old enough, well, the kids are they're playing their vintage games now. When you didn't play it around the original Mega Drive, it, it, it's infamous. Yeah, it is, man. Uh, you know, just like digging around, it's like, what does the world say about it, man? It's like surreal comic satire, danger, well, daringly misanthropic commentary on early Earth life. So that came out in '91, and there were two sequels to it, I believe. Yes, two sequels, and this uh, this project to Gem and Earl. Back in the Groove was on Kickstarter, right? It was successfully funded on Kickstarter and it's delivered. Man, that makes me so happy to <laughs> Carmageddon. We're thinking about other Linux games that uh, just never showed up. And mm-hmm. that makes me kind of sad. But this, this is here. It's currently on sale. You can go pick it up. It's available on Steam. Hey, it's available on Steam, not Steve. No, don't get me wrong ideas. <laughs> but. <sighs> Tonight, uh, we get to ask a few questions about how that went. And yeah, that's just like the first thing uh, before we started the recording. So you've been around using Linux for a long time, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I um, guess we were, you mentioned Slackware earlier. I actually bought a book of Caldera Linux, and it was a Slackware CD, and that's where I started. And I I kept that machine running for some time. At one point, I had to convert it from libc5 to libc6, and Oof. I had to have like a cross compiler and weird environment variables. And pretty soon, the whole thing kind of fell apart. And but uh, you know, it was a good learning experience, and <laughs> kept going. Mm-hmm. Still, well, still use it today. Uh, how how what decisions, being good or ill, led to uh, like hey we. We're going to push this out on Linux. And I mean, fortunately, it's Unity. So that's a better love story than UE4 on Linux these days. But what led up to that initial conversation? I'm like, hey, man, um, 
we want to get to Jamin Earl pushed out and we're like I can do this. Um, well, yeah, Unity made it very, very, extremely trivial. There's one uh, if def in the code base that says Linux on it, and it's only for the movies, the intro movie and the outro movie. Uh, they need to be in a WebM format. That's it. I don't know if you've talked with other Unity developers, but it's it was trivial. I mean, there's no reason with it, I think, in general, for Unity developers not to support Linux. It's just uh, agreed. <laughs> yeah. So, so, lesson. so I, I, I mean, like a lot. Uh, we we've heard a lot of uh, developers say that like supporting Linux through Unity is kind of difficult, or at least it at costs least an ad- millions of dollars in that. It, it's yeah. It, 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 yeah. Ex- exactly. Um. So, like, uh, the the blurb we were given about you said that you've been handling uh, the ports for uh, Linux, Mac, Windows, PS4, or Xbox One. So, how is like, um, have have you had any sort of problems with using uh, something cross platform like Unity? Are there any pain points? Do you have any like, hey, Unity, you did a fantastic job with this? Anything like that? Um. It, it works generally well uh, for the PC platforms. Again, like fairly trivial there. Um. I have not had much pain pain there. Uh, you know, some of the consoles are, are more challenging. Switch was really challenging because it's kind of like running for mobile, somewhere between mobile and like a PC spec kind of. So that's hard uh, a little bit. And then there's controllers uh, are are a challenge when you're going from the PC to to um, consoles. That's the general thing. We're using uh, Unity's input handler, or are you using like a like an external one, like SDL two, or did you roll your own? Rewired is a package that mm. takes care of a lot of the the nitty gritty. And we we, 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 we yep. Go ahead. We, I was just gonna say we are familiar with Rewired too. Yeah. yeah, I yes. think it's a popular <laughs> package, and then mm-hmm. then I kind of wrapped it in some other stuff to to ease some other things. But it was it would does all the heavy lifting. All right. It's it's it, it's it's good to see that like porting a game to Linux is not as harrowing as some some folks have said. Uh, are you a fan of the OG Toe Jam and Earl, or did you come out of this project like excited that like you have a favorite game that you're working on bringing back, or what, what's your relationship with the franchise? Yeah, I, I, yeah. So I played the original game like one time, once upon a time, at my uh, a friend of my dad's. And we're like down in the basement meeting some kids. And I had no idea that many, many years later, I would know the creator, become friends with him. My wife uh, worked on Toe Jam and Earl 3, the, hmm. the uh, 3D version. And that's how we all became friends. And, what did, what did um, she do? She was the lead artist. And she oh. also contributed nice. the terrain for this game. So it was kind of oh. nice when we started this game. I was like, I need to work, I need an artist. Well, I live with one. So that's kind of nice. I can just like have her make the art here. <laughs> you so you have to be was... very careful about the feedback, though. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Well, <laughs> make sure it's very feedback. constructive. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so Greg Johnson, the creator of Toad Jim and Earl, uh, we became friends over time when I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area, and he and I worked on a, a Nintendo DS game together um, for Konami. That project didn't make it out the door, but then it went on to be the basis of uh, another game that he made called Doki Doki Universe. But we okay. really got we got along pretty well working together, and so. He, we were talking about different pro, you know ideas of projects we might do um again and so we hit on doing toe jam and earl and i and i was kind of like well we should do it like indie, you know indie gamer style we should do a kickstarter and it was sort of a naive kind of idea and it turned out to be like a huge pile of work but uh but it was great it turned out t- turned out it was a sort of a saga we got picked up by adult swim in the process and then at some point they they said you you know go back and be indie indie developers again guys so uh um it was uh it was a journey for sure uh so like um so you you, you did a lot of like the engine programming and whatnot did you have any uh, say in like any of the game design components or was that sort of out of your wheelhouse well uh, Greg was the is you know the designer of Toji mm-hmm. and I mean I yeah I did I kind of like to just execute the design as best as possible and as you know faithfully as possible to the vision but of course everything is sort of like 
you start with an idea and then the actual realization of it starts to, you know, change that. So it's, it becomes not exactly what any one person was envisioning at first, you know, it turns, it's like a synthesis process. So. Uh, were, were, were you the only dev on the project? Uh, no, there, we had, um, also, Chris Hall and Co. Costrella, who were two other uh, fine engineers that joined us at some point in the project. Um, towards the end of the project, um, I, I left, kind of ran money on it, got another job, and they took over, or they completed the game to, to release, but then I stayed involved, and then afterwards, I took back over the maintenance and sort of the continued, uh, uh, you know, support of the game which i still do to, to this day so. yeah that, that, that's cool uh we see we see a lot of like one man or like very very small team projects um and a lot a lot of like newer games coming out especially in like the kickstarter space or like steam early access uh there it's just a group of friends or one guy do you have like uh ha having gone through this whole process do you have like any advice or anything you sort of wish you knew ahead of time about projects like this or any advice for people who are trying to attempt something like this? Um, well, I, I, I've done a few games, and they're always way harder than you think to get them shipped. You know, uh, that's I don't think it's a big secret, but uh, it just it's just they're unfathomably hard sometimes to really complete. Um, um, but I think you know, work with people you like. Uh, that's just foremost. That's a really important. A factor. Greg's a joy to work with. Everyone I worked with in the team. Also, there was um, Nathan Shorts was the talented artist and um, who who created the so the new new looks and of uh, Toe Jam and Earl. And, uh, and he also was at the beginning of the Kickstarter. So yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of put me on the spot for advice. I don't. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> think fast one of the things i'll touch with real quick um with the art style was there any discussion about because you know if we will rewind you know just back to 2019 it was still kind of at the tail end but you know we went through the we, we call it hipster pixel explosion where everything needed to be retro was was that discussion ever had and like do, do we want to like go oh yeah that aesthetic or it was Greg Johnson was the original artist of, of the characters that are animating in the middle of the screen. And I think he's a very talented pixel artist. And I pushed him like, Hey, you should, you should be the artist. But he, uh, he didn't want, he didn't go for that. Um, he, he also did the pixel art for, um, uh, star control for some of the, some of that, which is another big game that they worked on. And so, yeah, he's got some real skills there, but yeah, that's guess just one of one of uh, skills in his uh, tool belt that he doesn't want to use right now. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so um, I, you mentioned uh, working with Unity and uh, having had a lot of experience with Unity games because we're, we play video games on Linux and we see uh, we see a lot of those. Yeah. No, <laughs> One of the things that surprised me was that according to the Steam uh, minimum requirements uh, on the store page, uh, how did you fit the Unity engine into three megabytes? Uh, the Unity en engine into three megabytes? I'm not sure. Because Maybe the our minimum system oh. requirements on Steam for Linux says three megabytes. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, that's <laughs> probably just us being sloppy there. <laughs> Sorry. Good luck. You know, so, maybe. So, <laughs> I, I, I gotta, I gotta ask because you, you do say one, one, one of them, their distributions. Uh, what, what did you use, uh, for like your, uh, Linux development and testing for toe jam and Earl, uh, just like Ubuntu arch, I roll have, your own. Right now I have a, a, a Nook running Lubuntu lightweight mm. Ubuntu and, uh, and so I run Steam, and I just make sure that the game pops up and runs all right. Mm -hmm. That's after I, so after much I push. more. I mean, I, how many times have we been told, and like, oh, I spooled it up in a VM, and it started. Yeah. So should yeah, it. it started. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a, a knock is definitely a step up from yes. that for sure. Yes, <laughs> it has okay, hardware. So. Um, like one of the things that I saw uh, on the uh, Steam store page outside of that was. Uh, 
there was a lot of uh, influences that went into Back in the Groove from other games and other media. What games would you say were like the big influencers? Well, again, I'm sp- I'm I'm recant uh, recounting Greg's tales of of the origins, but it's essentially a roguelike, but the terrain instead of a dungeon with you know rooms being cut out of walls, the terrain is is terrain cut out of space, and uh, essentially that's the concept there with kind of exploration as a key key aspect of it. So that's that's always been a fundamental thing. I always thought that it's interesting because making a rogue thing for you know developers of, of, of many different stripes, and I didn't really think about it until I worked on it. I was like, oh, I guess I, I worked on a roguelike at this point. Even though sometimes people don't think of Toad Gemini's roguelike, but that's its that's its real DNA. Yeah, they, yeah, they okay. have a bit of they have a bit of a reputation on this show. We've we've seen we've played a lot of roguelikes that um let's just say there's been not a lot of care put into like how the levels are generated. Um and and other other issues. Um do you do you feel like defending the genre? Do you do you feel like roguelikes are uh, unexplored? Do you feel like you you're for the 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 uh sort of more popularity of procedurally generated levels? Do you have do you have a take on it at all? Well, I mean, I'm biased a little bit towards procedural because those are things you can do as a programmer, you know, when you're not, your skills aren't art. And so um, when you're looking at the pie chart of what you can do and what's, what you bring to the table as like a programmer, then procedural is obviously, you know, compelling. So I like that. But I mean, sure, you could, it can be, can be done great and you can do and there and if you can uh you know the layering of different noises to produce the terrain of minecraft and you know is are just like elegant ways of finding th- uh procedural algorithms that really are you know ha- ha- are um producing you know in, in intricate worlds is great or they can be really quick and dirty so i don't know but the, but the, I, I like them so Okay. Do, do, do you and have a favorite as, roguelike? Um, I I'll have to confess I don't play as many g- games to really have a deep uh, favorites. My g- my formative gaming years were sort of Apple II E era, mm. and uh, so I, you know, and then <laughs> early early P- PC days and LAN gaming mm. when you had to like sit sit next to each other and whatnot. But uh, but for so a long rem- time, I re- just, remember that. Well, that, that, that's like a thing. Can't do that no more. Well, come on, man. We had, I, I, we were doing the land thing like right up until probably like Unreal Tournament. I think that was when this internet thing came along and it was viable enough to do like remote multiplayer. But yeah, you know, land parties are gone. That's sad. Yeah, we were we were still doing yeah. them until like 2005 because like Xbox System Link like that had that had like lo- local network supports. So you could add big games to Halo and whatnot. It was it was, it was still a thing. Um, cool, cool. Uh, Pedro, you had a question though. Yes, I do. Uh, I'm a big fan of roguelikes. Uh, I'm not very good at them, uh, but I for some reason I guess I'm a glutton for punishment. I keep going back to them. Now I've had Two Gem and Earl in my same library for a while, but I've never started it. If you had to pitch me to actually go in and try the game, what would it be? <laughs> well, the the big um, diver- the the big was it selling point of Toe Jam and Earl is that it was kind of the original casual game that um, it hits a certain sweet spot as you're roaming around of of being able to just kind of you know like so you're walking around there's not a lot of other games where you walk around you know usually you're it's at a higher level of anxiety um although you know the earthlings are there to definitely keep you know the the excitement uh, of the experience but but a lot of it is like the music and the groove and the feeling of it and um I, I think though, when we were doing the Kickstarter, especially, and people, a lot of fans were coming, they would send us these letters about these experiences they had playing it, you know, with, on the couch with their, you know, someone like their mom or their brother, and it was in t- very intense. Some of these letters because some of those people weren't, you know, here anymore, and so this game represented this powerful experience for them, and and uh, so we really wanted to. Um, you know, do do 
as best as we could by that by that sense so you know which is say it's a great it's the original couch cooperative game and you can play it online now with people even though we're socially distanced so you can still get that that experience but those were the real distinguishers it it was set up to make a vibe where you could do you co cooperate you you can like high five to help your friends and you open up presents near your friend then you share the you share the present and there's a lot of um emergent gameplay from the from that um the, you know cooperation Okay, cool, cool. Now, when we talk about the online stuff, my, my first thought is, um, do you, what are your thoughts on Steam with the remote play together as the universal band-aid for so many games now saying, hey, we have online multiplayer, to which I have to retort, not really. I I have heard a report that, there, that our game works great with that, um, that somebody tried it out the other day and and because you can also do local join you can be playing and another person can hit start on their controller and and they get and a little player coin pops up you get to pick the coin so with that remote play from steam you can do the same experience so you're really playing on one person's computer but it's just sort of changing how the how the you know network network diagram works basically but the, you know it's it's kind of cool i like it on the technical aspect um but Tochi but, Mineral yeah. has this built in. No, I mean, that's mm -hmm. in the internals. It's not, you're not reliant on remote play together. No, no, no. Yeah. You got, we have matchmaking and, and, uh, so you can, okay. or you can do private games. Do you do the, uh, the steam play integration where people can just right click and join the game or, uh, yes, we have invite. Somebody told, I think I got a bug report about it, so I have to double check it, but we can do invite. Yeah. Fantastic. So many games don't do that. It's like, this is, this is like the, the killer feature of Steam. There's no, no longer hunting for servers. I just give, I just say, bring this person into game or I go to your game. But right? then you have games like Shadow Warrior 2 and it's like, oh, you think you know how to join an online multiplayer game. You're wrong. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <You're> wrong, sir. <laughs> that will immediately take you down. So did, did, had, had you worked with Unity on Linux before this? No, I had not. This oh, was my so first you were walking Unity into game. it like, okay, let's. What's this all about? Let's see how we get to dance. Yep. Yeah, I was. Uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd worked on other. I'd worked on cartridge games. I was at a toy company for, uh, called Leapfrog, and I worked on various educational toys that ran on like cartridges. And I worked on the Nintendo GS game before that. So I had a you know some experience getting through sort of gold mastering a game, and in that process going through like the certification and whatnot but yeah you ramping up to well i done i done some some tinkering and i also made a nintendo wii game with some friends in my in in the town i was living in and um so um are you using then, a wii homebrew for that or are you uh like no we were from? we were authorized wii developers mm -hmm. and we we released it on WiiWare. Mm -hmm. yes so, so you know, sort of different, different, but it was all like new, new engines, and that was that was a hand rolled engine with some Nintendo middleware, and um, and then yeah, so but then this was the first first uh, shot at Unity. So, well, I, one thing I want to ask, I mean, uh, for anyone curious about you know releasing their game on Linux, and you're currently sitting there. The upfront cost to do it, be it time, money, and just on the back end with any type of additional QA. What was that, you know, really looking at? Like, what would you be walking into after going through this from like, okay, well, let's uh, see what this is going, how Unity is going to work out with Linux and get your nuts it up all the way to the end of, all right, finished product. Was it a nightmare? Was it just a, just a little extra thing or just kind of a pain in the neck, but, you know, something that was surmountable? Well, we, um, it's, I think this is a, it depends. It's if you work as a hobby and you can make games from scratch, but it's hard to, you know, survive <laughs> with, you know, we were, we got kickstarted and, uh, and so we had the ability to have salary. And then, uh, we were also supported by contract from Adult Swim. So we were able to work full time on the game. Um, but you know, previously, like the the Wii game I did was all you know on the side, and um, so I think you can you can do 
um, whatever you determine to do, you know, money or no money, I guess. So, um, I don't know. It doesn't really answer the question, but it's not, it, there's no built-in cost. Unity itself is free um, unless you want to um, remove the, the, you know, the uh, watermark or whatever that yeah. pops so up. The, the bloop of noop. <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, if you're going to build a game and you want to do it organically and you, um, I mean, the cost is kind of nominal if you want to get rid of the splash or whatever that, but, or if you, you release a game with that screen and, and have it grow, you know, it, until you have a fan base and then, then, per, you know, by the professional license, but. Uh, spe- uh, I was just say, speaking, speaking of like other, yeah, go ahead. other side projects, do you, do you have any side projects you're working on? Anything that's like your, your little hobby tinker toy project or. This has been the main side project I've had for the last couple of years since, uh, um, I, you know, I tinker with other things. I, you know, got a free BSD box and I, uh, and I just kind of, play around with it and I um, play with Python and random things I find and but you know but those are all very small and play with home home automation all that kind of you know mm. stuff but that, that's exactly where okay. I'm at with home automation I play with it and it bites me <laughs> violently yeah I do need to ask uh, so uh, how'd you see the uh, well I don't want to say resurgence because it was never a thing but the creation of a uh, bsd gaming scene do you think that'll ever happen <laughs> uh i don't i don't know i don't think it doesn't feel like it um i mean well if steam gets there right i mean steam doesn't run on bsd does it or it does you're nodding yeah I, it Man. sort of does there's uh, that compatibility layer that, with that, linux yeah, that's that kind of like saying sort steam of can kind of run on an m1 mac but <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, uh, here's something I uh, just to pick your brain. Uh, w- w- being involved in game development as long as you've been, um, is this not just a really interesting, fantastic time to start playing with the options of be it Unreal Engine, Godot, uh, Unity, and open source? You have access to the code base itself in 2021. It, uh, isn't that um, quite a, quite the shift from say um, you know just 10 years ago when you were looking to do something like, you know, do, let, let's see if you could unlock, you could license UE3 or something like that and see what type of Frankenstein monster you could make. Yeah. Oh, definitely. It's a golden age, uh, you know, in terms of the access to super powerful tools and, and um, I, I guess just, all, you know, and assets and everything there. It's just amazing. Um, it, it used to be such a uh, closed off, a thing to be able to build any kind of game with of of some level of polish and and now you can get you know and it's kind of mind-boggling i guess but at the same time you you can be very dwarfed in all of that because so much is amazing you know like you got to be like <laughs> amazing next level right to, right. to mm-hmm. really to stand I- out so I I kind of I kind of want to end the interview on a, on maybe something of a bit of a controversial statement. Do you have any Do you have any spicy game dev hot takes? Do you have any, Do you have any, Do you have any opinions that might that uh, about like the game development as a topic or like a trend you're seeing? Any anything you want to get off your chest? Anything you want to share? Uh, gosh, I don't. Yeah, again, being on the spot for hot takes. I don't know. I mean, it's great that uh, <laughs> people um, play games, make games. Uh, you know, I wish that that the world was more full of that. So it's not much of a hot take, but uh, I just feel like we need, need more fun. I <laughs> need a lot more fun. That's right, man. Well, Jeff, mm-hmm. oh, uh, yep. someone is uh, oh, poking oh, me in chat. Uh, yeah, Just uh, to figure out oh, how, yeah. uh, what is your favorite uh, way to make a grilled cheese sandwich? Basically, all you have to do is say mayonnaise on a grilled cheese sandwich is blast. <laughs> Do do we're, we're 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 trying we're trying to set up internet feuds. Uh, well, kinda. You might. Do you know Iculus Ryan C. Gordon? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't catch that. Oh, um, Ryan Gordon. For basically from 2000 to 2012, he was the Linux gaming industry. Oh yeah, I'm I'm afraid I'm I'm not aware. 
Uh, <laughs> we, 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 we had him on for an interview a while back, and the last question we asked him was, how do you make your grilled cheese? And he had, he had the controversial take <laughs> of, oh, if you spread some mayonnaise on the outside before you grill, on the side that you grill, you get a nice crust. Oh, wow. Did, you, did, you, did y'all try that? Absolutely. I not. did. He did. He's a monster. I did. <laughs> I, I like mayo, I, I, okay? So... <laughs> I, again, if you if you don't make your own garlic butter and make the grilled cheese in that, you're doing it wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> I microwave my grilled cheese sandwich like a normal person. That's a soggy grilled cheese. That is <laughs> that is just melted bread and cheese, my friend. So that's why I got my straw. <laughs> right. we're, we're not going to end any better than that. No, 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 Jeff, no, um, no. Seriously, 100%. Thank you for taking the time. Um, it's been very important to us, me particularly, to have people come on and just you know things like just get in the background but more importantly it's like linux is not a big bad spooky thing and you know if you like to release a game on it support's not going to be a nightmare and worst case scenario you're going to learn something is that it? that's right Fair to yeah say. yeah absolutely it was it was a pleasure to meet you all and, and i spent a little time with you guys and go buy uh, the game. It's currently on yeah. sale on Steam. Toad, you yeah. have an Earl back really in cheap. the group. Do, 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 do you do the social medias? Do you have anything you yeah. want to plug? Or, uh... I don't. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty, I mean. Smart I man. Don't, yeah. 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 Smart yeah. Man. I mean, we do have, we do have a, a, a very active Toad, you Earl Twitter feed and Facebook feed uh, that uh, Nap uh, keeps up with. And uh, so, yeah, they're, they're there to right. follow for sure. Well, El, El Jefe, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Seriously, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yes, v- v- very, very much. This, this was a great interview. Oh coming up next, we got some hate mail. We, we find out whether or not you can get USB 3 speeds through USB 2 pins. Never! And wouldn't you know it, uh, big, big kudos to uh, Jeff for... Uh, Hefe. Yes. <laughs> Talking us through uh, basically how to uh, submit Unity uh, or a Unity game right, uh, out towards the world, the world with Linux. It was uh, very, very nice. But if you'd like to uh, talk to us about your game that you're developing, that you will totally, you guys, I promise, put out a Linux give version a, give, of. Give us Bitcoin. Yes, <laughs> you can absolutely our Dogecoin. Uh, still up there. Yeah, hey, we can take Bitcoin. By the way, we forgot that. Yeah. Uh, well, like you, 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 it, it was flashing on the screen. Like, if you want to get in contact with us, send us some Bitcoin, and we'll uh... <laughs> pay for play, bitch. That was the subliminal message. It, there's nothing subliminal about it now, but okay. Hey, pay attention <laughs> to the news. Crypto's dead. Has no future. GameStop. That's the future. Yeah. But yeah, uh, make sure you go to linuxgamecast.com and hit the contact button. There's a little uh, guide uh, as to the different kinds of um, requirements that we have if you'd like to get in touch with us. Money is not one of them. Uh, Money just stick. make sure you keep the amount of URLs to a minimum, none, if at all possible, because the spam golem will um, just that, knock your stuff There's down. also an email address there, madam, <laughs> if you're curious. You've, if you're wondering, you try it, see if you can sneak it past our spam golem. If it's like, get that nonsense, there's an email address right there that you can... Mm-hmm. But... Um, yeah, do you that. Also- We'd love to get in touch with you and you send us a relationship advice, just anything that you want. Uh, we live on your questions, so I'm sure we said something that might have pissed you off this week, and we'd love to hear about it. And if you're a Patreon supporter as well, send us some messages over Patreon. Yeah, just leave a message on the post, man. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of brilliant, but we need to talk about UBS Capture. Now, speaking of Patreon, more shilling. I know, right, uh, there is the video up currently for the USB three air quotes uh capture card that the i blue, bought blue sb yeah the it's blue, blue. <laughs> it's a three point nope is what i like to call it and uh that was available on amazon but spoilers it's not anymore um <laughs> go watch that that'll drop i think for everyone on monday but this is from travis travis is like it seems everyone likes the 4k elgato capture sticks okay they cost around 100 bucks all right um is it worth the money um are the cheap ones just as good being that is it's all digital man hmm i'm gonna i'm gonna go out on a limb okay if you're gonna find something that's gonna be usb3 and if it's a stick and if it's the hundred dollar price tag it probably does what it says on the tin i legitimately when i picked up the um like 18 16 dollar usb 
three uh, thing, I genuinely thought, I'm like, hey, man, it's 2021, right? It's going to be dog shit, but you can probably get some iffy, very iffy looking 1080p60 for under 20 bucks in 2020. I was fucking wrong, kids. But once you get to like the 70 to $100, you end up with some uh, blinky RGB bullshit like Pedro's looking for right now. There it is. Uh, ah! Size! Ah. I load! Fuck! <laughs> and uh, it'll work. I mean, it's going to work with a V4L2. And you just plug it in, it's going to show up as a webcam. That's like something, another thing I'm working on. Um, I'm going to be doing an entire series, like, with, like this is how the OBS kids. So stay tuned for that. And that, I'm going to be showing you how to set up capture cards and all that fun stuff. Because apparently, we don't think about things like this. This is a common question, again, that I actually mm-hmm. got when I was talking about USB capture cards. Was like, I, I got one, but it doesn't transmit sound. Now, it's like, How's that supposed to work? Because, you know, you HDMI, you plug it in, it's going to be um, ICE 958. Yeah, it's going to come out. No, Pedro, it's coming over the HDMI cable. Like normal. Uh, yeah, th- these are uh, breakout cables if you want to monitor the audio separately. See, I don't live that peasant life. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> typically, you, 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 I, I'm talking about we're coming from a switch. Now, here's something that we would naturally just. This is like one of the things that needs to be broken out because I wouldn't have thought otherwise. I'm like, okay, you set up your capture card and, and you know, it's going to be using um, V4L2, which doesn't support audio. I'm like, of course it doesn't. It's for a webcam, but it's going to work with that. So what, what do we do? Oh, Pulse Audio Sync. Boop, 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 boop. Done. All right. Now you got your HDMI audio coming over. On Windows, you just plug the damn thing and it works. Yeah, it's because it's it's a webcam, right? Webcams have audio. It just gets treated Under as Linux, a separate thing. It, yeah. Not going to happen. So you got to set up your sync. So uh, little tips and tricks and stuff like that. But uh, mm-hmm. that's all we got. Uh, oh, no, we got one more. Yeah, we do. Yeah. It's from No Calf Ben. And they say, I have a spare Raspberry Pi 3 Model B V1.2 running Ubuntu Server 2010. Is there any or is there a way to turn it into a Minecraft Bedrock server? I downloaded the Linux version of the software. When I try to run it, nothing happens. Sad face. Yeah, so uh, when I first looked at that, it's like, oh, Minecraft server. Yeah, you could totally do that. So I looked up how to do it. Uh, Yeah, and uh, the thing I missed was, oh, it's the Bedrock server, right? So uh, here's the thing. The Bedrock Uh, server is the Microsoft uh, one. What the fuck is the difference? What what is a Bedrock server? One is .NET. The other one is Java. (laughs) So so here's here's the thing that threw me up because I had to set up a Minecraft server for a child a while ago. Um, Bedrock is not like uh, when when you go to download the Minecraft server, they push you towards Bedrock, which has a Linux server that you can run. on your x86 64 whatever but there's no linux bedrock clients then they're like yeah fuck you use the java version so yeah uh (laughs) that's the thing you're not going to be running uh, an x86 64 uh bit of software on the raspberry pi 3 you need a raspberry pi 4 and you need um a 64-bit OS, and you're going to have to run QEMU or any other virtualization software Box. to get, yeah, to get any uh, kind of x86 emulation going, x86-64 specifically. So yeah, you're going to need the Raspberry Pi 4 at least. Yeah, I mean, you could you could probably still swing like a classic Minecraft server on a Pi. Oh, yeah. it, prob- it probably won't run great because, you know, Java on ARM, but yeah. anything more yeah. than three people and that server is going to choke. But yeah, <laughs> hey, I, I mean, it, worst it's, case scenario, it's, it's going to be a fun learning experience. So it's, yeah. in, in yeah. Indeed. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess on that Pi powered bombshell, does that sound good? What is this, Weekly Daily Wednesday? <laughs> we can cue the music. You can always find us around 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time over at Twitch. Going live an hour before that. If you're one of the uh, fiscally irresponsible miscreants supporting us at Death Note or above, we are live in Discord with possible video feed hotness. If you want to get in touch with me, just at Vinstone on Twitter. Or I remember that we have our own federated timeline, courtesy of Civic, over at mast.linuxgamecast.com. Inspired by our interview guest, I'm now going by El Jordan. You can find me at The Burning Fool on Twitter, or I stream sometimes at twitch.tv slash burning fool. And I feel like doing any kind of a Spanish accent would be hitting a little too close to home, so if you'd like to get in touch with me at unaccounted for uh, on Twitter, or 
Yeah, that's about it. There's a mass.linuxgamecast.com that's at and accounted for with the actual number for at the end, but I don't really go there. So, yeah. <laughs> send, send all your communications and correspondence to that. <laughs> you can. Damn Nothing's going to happen. Damn credits. You can. Do it. Get us out of here. <laughs> this is my favorite the Dire Straits song. Sultans of Spandex. <laughs> Check out Spandex George. He knows all the G strings. Um, yeah. We got we, we to thank all you lovely underwear and non underwear wearing people. I don't care what kind of underwear you're wearing, or if you're not wearing underwear, you give us money. So we got to thank Aldius, Bob Bram, Scott M, Mr. Fox Dog, Arthur there on the Atomic Ass, Mike G, Empty, uh, our Chicago Kicks Ass Patreon tier backers, Dark Wing, NRC Monsters, Jack B, Renaud LePage, Ryder X Machina, Paul Verotenuda, Justin, and Frosty Claw. We got some tattoo action notes. from Nova K, Basil, Chad, Romero, Marcin, System T, Craig A, Trinae, Leonardo, Dak, Kim, Smashley, Chris, Steven, Jill, Benjamin, and Zeno. Thank you, Zeno. And of course, all the chairlings like Jason B, Giovanni, Joanna, Steven, Grunk at the Long Apollo P, Greg L, Linux Nuru, Dirty Dean, Colsta, North Ranger, Sherry Vig von Havenstaffen, uh, Michael M. Todd, Simcha B, Vascat, J, Douglas H, Rosmawada, Thomas D, Dodger, Steve B, Steve E, there's a lot of Steves, Egal D, Nathan, uh, Dementor, Daniel, and of course, library.tv forward slash (laughs) at the Nexus Pyramid. (laughs) Lichen says that on a fog, foggy night, and the full moon, Lichen's Pyramid will arise. Dinofire, beautiful people, we'll see you next Mega Ultra Chicken, shush. Five dudes.